Hey guys, and welcome back to Red Dead Redemption. Now, this video is going to be a bit of a collection of clips, essentially, of us just tying off some loose ends. So first up, we have one of the elusive strangers, Aztec Gold. Can use English if you prefer, or Dutch maybe. German, Italian, yes, no. English is fine. When, as I was saying, have you seen a rock that looks like this? I am trying to track down a family heirloom left here by my tatarabuelo. Not sure I get your meaning. Uh, my great grandfather? No, great great grandfather. Yes. Anyway, a great man. So he was given a map to a treasure hidden in the hills of Nuevo Paraíso by the Aztec shortly before he burned a lot of them for heresy. Like I said, a great man. <laughs> first is finding this rock right here. Unfortunately, I am not the great adventurer my abuelo was. I'm having no luck whatsoever. And my wife and children, stuck in the capital, continue sending me wires asking, when am I going to see my papi again? And I tell them, Gold, you ungrateful wretches! Gold. <laughs> if that ain't teaching the young right from wrong, nothing will. Uh, uh, you certainly look like the type who can get things done. I would, of course, offer a reward if you would aid me. Seems reasonable. You were not properly introduced. Basilio Aguirre Olmos de la Vargas. John Marston. You see that map? Once you find the missing pieces to the map, meet me back at El Matadero. Sure. Farewell, Marston. To fame and fortune. So, this rather unfortunate gentleman is getting a little bit of grief off his family whilst he's walking around looking for gold. Aztec gold, no less. Apparently left to him by his grandfather. Well... That certainly sounds like something we want to be part of now, doesn't it? So, if we have a look at the map, and that is not the correct map, past Titan. There it is, Bassiello's map at the bottom. Quite an easy one, this, to be fair. So, we have a very crude drawing. But, luckily with these stranger quests... Uh, you don't really need to think too hard about it because the game kind of tells you where we need to go. Or at least it gives you a very rough idea anyway. So, Sidewinder Gulch. He was nearly in the right place. But, oh well. Good old uh, gold hunter John is on the case. So I wonder what this Aztec gold could be then. Wonder what sort of fame and fortune we'll get from this quest. Well, being Aztec gold, I'm pretty confident in saying it will be a rather healthy reward. So we've got to go and find three pieces of a map and then meet our friend. And then hopefully we can go together and find the spoils. Or something. Now, luckily, with each map, a wad of cash was also hidden in the cash. $26, you know, not the biggest amount of money in the world, but better in our pocket than somebody else's. So you've acquired another piece of Basilio's map, which has clues to the next treasure location. Okay. Now, this one is, like I said, it's kind of a all-over fetch quest, but because the game highlights where we need to be, is quite forgiving. After many hours of horse riding later, we come across a pretty abandoned and decrepit looking shack. Luckily, what we want is just inside. We've got a standard treasure chest next to a bedroll, which we'll certainly be having. $22 waiting for us. And I don't know who keeps hiding all of these uh, copy-and-paste lockboxes around. 
putting the same rocks on each one. But we're getting used to that fact now. Another bundle of money, which amounts to 22 gold. Well, well, $22 anyway. We'll take it. So, we've acquired another piece. You've acquired another piece of Basilio's map, which has clues to the next treasure location. Okay. All right. Seems easy enough. So, let's have a little peek, shall we? Now, luckily enough, this is quite a obvious one to find. Because it's a very unique landmark that you've probably already been by quite a few times. Now, the sun has set in the sky and the moon has risen. And it's getting a little bit chilly out, I'd wager. But no time to warm ourselves by the fire. We have treasure to find. Unfortunately, Midnight isn't exactly cooperating here. He is not a fan of these rocky, mountainous terrains. Probably because he's not a mountain goat. So here we go, the final piece of the treasure. At least the treasure map. We still haven't found this Aztec gold. Which I'm sure we will, right? Another wadge of money. We'll keep that quiet from old Basilios, or whatever his name was. Yeah, Basilios. Okay, we're doing pretty well when it comes to money. Luckily, he's only in the town just yonder. Now, whilst walking through this town, we do indeed find that there's another stranger's quest within. At this point of recording, I still don't know how many tra uh, stranger quests there is. One of the guides says there's 19. And most of the other guides kind of say there's like six, um, 18. So, not really sure. Love is the opioid. That's an interesting quest that we're going to get to in this um, clips section. And indeed, I end up going to the wrong area. Because I'm a fool. We also age John's knees by about 30 years. Let me see it. I've been waiting here, wringing my hands with expectation. Sounds unpleasant. <laughs> yes, yes. We're in luck. Do you know what this might be? Must be right around here someplace. Is it really? Yes. It looks like it's in those caves over there. Now, we're no strangers to these caves. We've seen a lot of action down here. But that's okay. In fact, uh, this is the cave we visited with Landon Ricketts when we were saving that uh, poor woman. But that was a long time ago now. Luckily, the caves are still deserted. And Basilios has disappeared with his lust for gold. And we just ran past a treasure chest, which they're kind of not really worth looting. I'm going to be honest, like $22 doesn't really do much for us. Hmm. Finally, so long. Goodbye, 
my poverty goodbye David oh, hello Vade <laughs> come to me yeah. what <sighs> <laughs> well, he's disappointed his family for the last time, I'm sure. Well, it wasn't exactly fruitless for us because we found, you know, about $100 or so, I guess. Now, time to deal with another hideout. Gaptooth Breach. Now, there isn't actually that many hideouts in the game. Far less than I actually thought there was. The rail house, huh? Alright, let's go find Floyd. Although this place does seem to be absolutely crawling with bandits. That's fine. We we'll send them to heaven. 45 caliber round at a time. Okay, so, yeah, um, there's actually only seven hideouts, and they're not actually marked on the map. They only appear when you get close to them. On the PlayStation 3, there was an extra one. Seems fair. What is it with these guys and looking for treasure? Surely the gold rush is over by now. Alright, well, whatever. An excuse to waste some banditos. And we do like wasting banditos. Now this weapon is insane. Probably my favourite weapon that we actually have. It's got a really healthy uh, magazine size. Fires really quickly. Pretty much as fast as you can pull the trigger, actually. It seems to have very decent accuracy. Reloads fast. What more could you ask for? Government issue. Let's continue cleaning these guys out. That guy had like 36 shots in his back. And he was still kicking. There must be some serious gold waiting for us in the mines. I mean, there must be, right? Oh, big fella. I do like the ivory grip on those guns, uh, or well, on our high-powered pistol as well. On, it does look it. really, really cool. Must have been a very expensive firearm <laughs> at the time, and yes. <laughs> yeah. No matter. <laughs> Alright, seems reasonable. We just got to find the treasure room. Can't be that far into the mine, surely. Oh, hello. I mean, whatever they've got, they are certainly defending it. Yeah, don't worry about it. We're on it. There's a hell of a lot of boxes of TNT around. Definitely going to want to be a little bit cautious when exploring this place. Yeah. 
Oof. That's all right. We got a shotgun. Dulls out justice. One cartridge at a time. Now, what I should be doing is shooting these TNT kegs as I'm going. Because you don't want to sleep on those. They can really uh, ruin your day. Let's just say that. They also have a pretty decent explosion radius as well. It doesn't look like much when they go up, but it is certainly bad enough when you get caught. Oh, big bubba brought the farm. There's someone creeping on you. I don't think we're really doing a lot of creeping, going to be honest. Yeah, this shotgun is really meaty. Nine dollars, that's not too bad. Oof. What did I tell you about those TNTs? Yep, I actually thought I was dead there. And then I was cursing myself because I thought <laughs> I was out of medicine. But nope, we have plenty. Place looks fairly cleared out at this point. Only a few of them left. Ooh. Oh man. That looked painful. <laughs> I don't think we're working him into a lather anymore. I think we've worked him into the grave. Again, it's been pretty lucrative. Oh, you're a good man. We will certainly help ourselves to that loot. Now, notice our friend here sits atop some explosives. Which uh, seems relatively unwise to me. There was nearly $200 in that chest. Now, there was a rather healthy explosion behind us. Um, I'm wondering if that has anything to do with our friend back here. Should we go have a look? Uh, yep, the explosives are gone. And looks like our friend's body is nowhere to be found. I'm guessing he uh, decided to have a cheeky little cigar. And, well... You know how the rest went. So this was a rather unfortunate trip for those guys. One got shot. Possibly made it back to safety. One blew himself up on a crate of TNT. And us, well, we've actually done, uh, you know, a decent amount out of this. So I guess good old John. Always profiteering from other people's crazy ideas. Legends say that maybe one day John's luck will run out, but today's not that day. And I am now only just realizing that we could have been having a lot more fun with these oil lamps. Jesus, wouldn't have been a lot left of that fella. Anywho, that's another hideout locked down. So yeah, as I said, only seven of these in the game. And from what I can understand, they're all pretty much open from pretty early on in the game. Anyway... Let's return back to where we were dealing with our Aztec gold friend 
and let's have a little look at the next stranger that resides within. Interesting quest, this one. Short and sweet, sort of. John's having some issues getting up there. Job so I could marry my beloved. She says she is still waiting for me, but I will never get out from here. I will never see Shanghai again. I'll live and die in the dust. Why not? I'm indentured. We all are. We're little more than slaves. Slaves? They ain't slaves, gringo. Not slaves at all. They just have to do a month's work to get a month's pay. Don't you, Zhao? Yes, sir. Let this man go free. This man signed a contract. If the law don't respect contracts, the law don't respect nothing. Ain't that right, Zhao? Come on. Give this man his freedom. This man owes me $10,000 if he breaks his contract. It's written down clear as day. Let him go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, gringo. Cowboy, get me, oh, I don't know, get me a white stallion like a real cowboy ride, and this dog is yours to keep. <laughs> well, he seems like a real cheery fella. I guess you should be careful what contracts you sign. Yes, okay, buddy. Well, if it's to get you back to your beloved, then I suppose, to be fair, if his contract only lasts a month, eh, I mean, it's, it is a shitty deal, but it's not the worst deal in the world. But anyway... Looks like we have spoken with Zhao, who is trapped in a contract which is preventing him from returning to Shanghai and seeing his lover. Zhao's foreman is willing to terminate the contract in exchange for a white stallion. White stallion? Uh, also known as Hungarian half-breeds, can be found in the wild. If you've already broken in a white stallion, you may purchase a deed. Mm. Well, luckily, we know roughly where we can go find one. And to be honest, we can get one for free. So, we're not going to pay out for one. Unfortunately, we are exchanging one man's freedom for the life of slavery for an animal, I suppose. And to a rather nasty bastard as well. But that's life in the Old West, I guess. Or at least that's life in Mexico. As we are south of the border. Right. I wasn't 100% sure if this was the right horse. I mean, it's a white horse. Yes. But it's not completely white. But I'm just, like, assuming this is the right horse. And as we now have a purple question mark. That uh, looks about right. So let's get this uh, horse back before something unfortunate happens. Well, Zhao, looks like you are a free man. I cannot thank you enough, sir. I am going home to my beloved. Well, I mean, okay, the guy might have been a knob, but at least he was a man of his word. Now, what I like about this is he jumped straight on his horse. <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. Just like, yep, this is mine now. 
Well, looks like we've done the Lord's work here. Now, this um, quest, unfortunately, is not quite over yet. We actually have to wait um, a couple of days, and then we have to go meet Zhao at the train station. And, unfortunately, we kind of get the feeling that we've been, well, maybe diddled just a little bit. There's also a guy here that wants a jewel. Uh, although we walked past him. I did actually have every intention in coming back and dueling him. Now I know how dueling works. But, unfortunately, he was gone by the time I came back. Tomorrow and leaving. <laughs> Quitting? I didn't say that. I, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. She's my beloved. <laughs> I love it. Looks like our friends got themselves an opium addiction. Well, that's not great. What is it with the Chinese and their opium? That definitely was nothing to do with the English. <laughs> anyway, so we got the achievement there for doing 15 stranger quests. So there's still a couple left. Now we also have to complete a night job in every... Um, oh, wow, I think we have to complete one of every night job or every task, whatever they call it. Uh, and there's five of those in the game. Charge so complete. let's go do that. Shall we? Now, this is actually quite an eventful night mission. Luckily, we've got a good old boy here leading us around. So we're going to have some idea of what we're doing. So we can either kill the criminals or we can hogtie them. Now, if we take them alive, we actually get paid more money. So that is what we decide to do. I mean, how many criminals can there be out in this fine establishment? Well, it wasn't long before we came across a couple of people up to no good. <laughs> but that's okay, because John Marston has an awful lot of rope. And you better believe we're going to be using a lot of rope before the night is out. <laughs> and then our friend, the officer, turns up. Anyway, lead on, pooch. Where next? Now, land and rickets doesn't appear to be around patrolling so I guess the torch has been firmly passed to John well, that's not good I guess our buddy here has found something oh a horse jacking he must have heard that that's okay the rope is the real hero amongst this nighttime watch mission. And we'll leave him there for our uh, officer friend to come grab him. There he goes, <laughs> right on cue. Oh, and a hold up as well. My, my, it is a busy night. Good thing we brought extra rope. And with that, that completes our nighttime patrol mission. Now, we actually get a somewhat decent amount of money for that. 
I'm not 100% sure how worth it, it is to do that, but it doesn't take long. And we did get, I think it's like $130 for that or something. Yeah, so $126. It's not too bad. Anyway, I believe that's the end of this particular clip video.